Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. So today I want to introduce you to this a lovely pair of chickens. I have a lovely rooster and hen here. These are ceramic and they were a gift from my parents many, many years ago. And you'll notice that they are quite dusty and dirty. They've been stored away, not because I don't like them. I love them and as a matter of fact, they were on display for many years in my kitchen. But you'll notice here, Mr. Rooster here has some cracks and some missing parts right there. They were on a shelf looking beautiful and I had a very naughty little kitten that decided to climb up and knock my rooster down. So that is what happened. I did try to glue the pieces back together. Some pieces I did not find. I don't know where they went. I searched and well, I put it together and I thought it looked really good. They were on display for a while. I had some greenery at the bottom kind of hiding all those cracks. But then I put them away in the garage. And as you can see, they got really dusty and some webs on them. And uh, they need some very, very deep cleaning now. I love them. I've kept looking at them and thought I need to fix them. So here I am. I am going to fix them up. I'm going to clean them up and restore them. Now, Mrs. Hen doesn't need any restoring. She is lovely. I do realize, though, because of the cracks and such, I'll need to do some repainting. And obviously, I don't have the paints that were used to create these lovely ceramic uh, chickens. Uh, my parents actually uh, asked, you know, there were a special order uh, and had them made for me. Uh, I don't know exactly the process or what was done to paint but it's just ceramic and I can use uh, acrylic paints so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean them up very well and like I said because I don't know what paints were used I'll have to redo her as well which is no big deal I think I'm going to have lots of fun so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really good cleaning on them and then I'm going to take some pictures so that I can see what colors or at least what was painted or you know the parts and such so that when I repaint it, uh, everything will be nice because I do plan on doing a coating of white all over them and then paint on top of the white. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because the parts where I'm going to be restoring are obviously going to look a little different. So I need to do some sort of a base coat. So let's get them all cleaned up and get to restoring. So now that I've got my rooster and my chicken fairly clean, I've uh, rinsed them off. I actually took them to the uh, tub and rinsed them off in there because, you know, pouring water over them wasn't doing the trick. Not only that, but I had to, uh, when I was pouring the water, I had to kind of scrub it a little bit more, get that degreaser activated again because it was starting to dry up on them. And also I would notice some spots where I actually missed. So I had to do a little bit more cleaning. 
But yes, I rinsed them off with some water, some running water, and then I dried them up with a paper towel. And this is the best that I could do. I think it looks really fine. I'm still going to keep, you know, if there, if I see a little spot, like I spot one right here, I'll, I'll wipe that off before I attempt to do any painting. Of course, before I do any painting, I do have to do some repairing. <clears throat> now, when I put this back together, I don't know what I did when I was gluing it together. It seems like I was doing a fine job over here, but you know that when you put things together, you think, oh, this fits perfectly, but somehow when you glue it, it all just gets all unaligned. And so this is what happened to this part right here. You can see that. She is not laying flat on here. And I thought about, you know, pulling it off and then repairing it, putting it back together, which would be the right thing to do, I believe. At least, at least, well, I know. <laughs> that would be the right thing to do. But this is glued on very well. I don't even know what glue I used. I probably used a super glue of some sort. Uh, and I'm scared now that if I try to, you know, break it off, it's not going to break where it's, the cracks are there. I'm afraid that I'm going to break it further and I'm not going to be able to, you know, put it back even at an any better condition. It'll probably be the same or worse. I can also see that this is not aligning over here, this bottom part. And this, this whole bottom part of the uh, tail here, the feather tail, just broke off this whole part right here and all of this and some parts over here. So uh, because I had some holes, I thought, well, I could repair them with some ceramic clay. So I did purchase this and I thought I could just push the clay from beneath and then uh, use a little bit of a, a couple of tools and try to carve them, smooth them out to look like the parts that were existing there before. So I, I do have a big gap here so I think I'm going to use that you guys I don't know that I'm going to do the best job this is the first time that I restore something uh, in this way so uh, this might not come out come out uh, excuse me this might not come out you know well done <laughs> but I'm going to attempt it so let's see what happens so I'm gonna get this clay out of here mold it up a bit get it soft so that I can start pushing it in and I'm going to be pushing it in from underneath all right, so if you're wondering what fancy tools I'm using, <laughs> I have an X-Acto knife and some other items here like a screwdriver and a crochet needle. I know I purchased some sort of clay tools some time ago and I don't know where I stored them. So I just pulled out a few items here. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to attempt to use those uh, for smoothing and shaping as well as my fingers. So I'm just softening up the clay. Now, um, you're wondering, how is it going to stick? Well, I'm actually going to use my hot glue, and I'm going to do that after I've pressed this into the uh, structure here and I have it kind of ooze out through the front, and then I can smooth it out. And once I have it in the position that I want, I can add some glue on the edges, and hopefully that'll hold it. And then let this, you know, after I've, you know, uh, sculpted it, <laughs> uh, then I can let it air dry. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, let me take a piece, for example. Uh, I actually want to do like a big giant piece, but I think I might waste uh, clay. So I'm just going to go underneath here, wherever there's a hole, just push it through to fill in as much as I can. And then you can just smooth it out once you have it here in the front. Just smooth it out like that and then of course I'll smooth it out some more to to uh, match the uh, textures sorry to match the textures here okay I don't know if you saw that I was kind of off camera let me do another little piece here push this right here I'll bring it up closer like that okay so I'm going underneath there's the clay going underneath it and then I'm going to do this hole right here and I'm going to push the clay, see kind of kind of seeping through, can you see that? So let me go underneath and fix that a bit there, okay, because it will spread out on you behind so you got to push it. Okay, once you got it protruding, then you can smooth it out so it kind of levels off with the uh, rest of the design here. So that's what I'm doing right there, see that? So we want to fill in all the little uh, holes here and there, uh, and then um, then we'll come back and smooth out and try to texture everything like the uh, 
legs, for example, of the chicken and so forth. So what I'm doing now is I'm using this crochet tool to kind of dig into the clay. It's not dry yet. It's uh, sort of sort of semi drying. It's pretty much just a top layer. I've gone and I just rubbed it into all the cracks and things like that. But what I what happens is when I've done that, then I've smoothed out the texture. So I'm going now with the uh, crochet hook and I'm trying to find some textures to kind of follow. These are all the feathers of the rooster. And I just want to restore that where I've smoothed them out a little too much with my fingers as I'm actually using a little bit of water uh, and that really helps to sculpt the clay. So that's what I'm doing. I know it's not easy to see because the clay is all this one, one tone, one color. But just going in and scratching off some places where I think a, a little texture, a little indentation in the clay like it already had when it was first cast. So I'm just removing some of the excess that doesn't need to be there. Now I'll go back with a sponge and I'll clean it all off, you know. Um, but in the meantime, this is what I'm doing. Anywhere where I see a big old clump of clay, I remove it and then just smooth it out with a wet finger. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing, clean up as much as I can. Let me move the camera up a little bit. There we go. So just do that and then just follow the lines of the feathers and then kind of smooth it out. Basically digging out the clay that I pushed into those little indentations. All right, so there's my rooster, and I filled it up uh, with as much of the uh, clay that I could into the little cracks and underneath. Um, I'm going to pour some hot glue now under here in the cavity, lots of it, just to make sure that all that clay gets sealed onto there and it doesn't fall right off, which is what I'm thinking is going to happen to a lot of the clay. But we'll find out. I really wanted to fill in the little tiny little cracks, so any clay that's laying on any other part of the rooster. It's not important if it falls off it'll be fine because even after going and trying to do the t redoing the texture of what was behind it or underneath it uh, I don't mind if some of this does fall off because then I'll see the the actual texture that was there before. I just really wanted the little cracks to fill in and I had to like put lots of clay everywhere so that I guess sort of like level off the cracks if you will so we'll find out how well it worked, especially down here where there was a big gap. Let's see, there was another big gap here in the front. So I'm going to put lots of glue underneath it. I tried to reshape the little apple that was there, so I added extra clay on top of them. So 
we'll see. Uh, I did have a little bit of clay on this little tip. That fell off. I'm not even going to bother attempting it again. Uh, I am thinking that I kind of would like to do like a like a black so that the black goes into the little crevices in here and then go over it with just a dry brush with white and doing a, a black and white look on them and just maybe just paint the red parts and the beak. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to attempt that and then um, of course maybe add some color. I really did like the color but I've always thought the color was kind of dull like maybe a, a little bit too much black and then well Obviously the black was placed underneath first and then the other paints colors were placed on top. But I don't feel like it was enough of it placed on top because it gave it a very dull look. Especially with the little chickies down here at the bottom. See how they kind of blend into the grass here? I feel like, you know, a brighter yellow, sorry, let me hold it right here. A brighter yellow could have been used on them. So we'll see what I do. I might do a very very pale kind of a thing but I do want to get black in there and then I'm going to paint it with white because when I do if I do decide to put color I don't want the the black underneath to make the the color on top too dull so we'll see what happens you guys um I, I really like the repair so far I'm just hoping that it does hold so we'll see we'll come back in a few hours once this is nice and dry oh and by the way I did clean it up a little bit but I'm going to clean it up a little bit more all right, so while Mr. Rooster over there is drying up, I'm going to go ahead and get started on my hen and see if my technique that I want to try will work. And then I can go ahead and do it on the rooster. Regardless, I have to do something to them because I've already done that to him. So I'm going to have to just commit to what I decided I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off with some black paint and I'm really going to get it right into the little crevices, right into the little corners. And I'm not going to give it like two paints or anything like that. I just want to give it that one coat so that when I paint over it, I have some little cracks and such little details that are going to be, you know, way on the inside that are going to be black. All right. So is it just me or does she look fabulous all in black? I'm really liking it, you guys. But I'm going to go ahead and commit to my idea of what I had before. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some white, but oh my gosh, she's stunning all in black. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and do the rooster as well before I go on with the white because look at my brush. <laughs> I don't want to have to wash the black off and then put white and then use it again for black and then white again. I mean, I could use another brush, but I'm being uh, trying to save my brushes, so I'm going to use this one. And go ahead and do that black. And look at that, you guys. <laughs> I've painted them both black. Of course, they still need to dry, especially uh, my rooster needs to dry some. I'm really loving it. They look so majestic in black. I think with a nice glossy coat, they will look fantastic. I've used up pretty much all of my black paint. I don't think I have any left in here to squeeze out. Uh, I'm going to try and do that just to little touch ups here and there. I wasn't going to do a full coverage, uh, but it turned out to be completely full coverage. But I want you to notice something and let me get the camera to do a uh, close up, especially right here of the claw on this side where I did a lot of the uh, repairing. I want you to see how that looks. Okay, let me put it like, I put it like this so the light, but you can see here, look. Can you tell where the cracks were, you guys? I think I did a darn good job of filling it up with clay. Now, I am going to tell you this. Um, you know, sometimes we want to say, oh, gosh, if I can do this, anybody can do this. But I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't think anybody can do this. I mean, you really need to have a little bit of uh, sculpting. I'm not uh, trained in any sculpting, of course, but I can do some sculpting. I have some artistic abilities. So if you have that and you are able to do this, of course, you're able to repair something like this. But I don't, if you don't really have that, you probably won't get a little detail. Um, you know, you got to do some um, sculpting to get the, the textures of the claw and such, the leaves around it, like this one, for example, that I had to repair. And then I did the little apple here and repaired that. Of course, I did these apples as well, too. But you can see I added two little leaves up on top. Let me see. Can you really see that? There we go. That's closer. See these two little leaves? But see, everything that's on here, it's not like, you know, 
deeply carved as you can see that leaf right here it's not deeply carved so I had to do these to kind of match you know the rest of these and I had to do some uh, re sculpting of some of these where I smoothed them out a little too much but here's where the crack was going through here and then up like that and I mean hello you don't see that and I also uh, added more uh, body to this little apple so that I could actually cover where the crack was going by. So, I mean, you do need some some ability there. You need a lot of patience, a lot of patience. And just, uh, you know, know that you're not going to do this, you know, in an hour or two. This is going to take a while. You know, you and, and, and one thing that I did learn, because I, I was putting clay here, I was putting clay up here, I was putting clay everywhere. Hello. Well, McDonald had a farm. But you know what? The thing is, you have to work on one section at a time, and then... Uh, sculpt whatever it is that you need to do there and then work you know continue on as you go upward or wherever which way you're gonna go but you do need to do a section at a time oh, the, the shadow is so bad on here but anyway I just wanted to point that out I think it looks really great let me turn it around because on the other side there was also some cracking a big old gap right here let me bring this closer there was a big gap right here where it did not meet up. I had to fill all this with clay and I just, you know, did whatever little random sculpting I could just to give it that look and so that it would end with a tail here as well because I think this is the feather, the tail feathers coming down right here. So I kind of wanted to make that look, I don't know if you can tell, this feather coming down like that. But, oh my gosh, uh, right here, I don't know what I did, but um little indentation there but i'll go ahead and just I have to touch that up because i just scratched it look that's the, the the plaster underneath so make sure everything dries really well before you uh attempt doing it and here's the feathers you guys where i also was filling in a crack you can't tell where the crack was i don't even remember where the cracks were uh, it did smooth out the feathers a little bit i did try to do some sculpting but i didn't want to go too far because you know if i go up here even though these are sculpted, you know, these are were already on here. I did I do some patch up work around here somewhere that I don't remember. And then I went with the uh, little tools that I had and, you know, created the little curves again. And then, anyway, you guys, I could go on and on explaining what I did. I just wanted you to see how, how good it, it turned out. So it wasn't a bad idea, the uh, little technique that I wanted to use. And I did fill it up with tons of hot glue underneath. I used like maybe four or five sticks of hot glue underneath uh, to glue this part down here. The clay that's under there uh, kind of created like a little, you know, uh, bits of glue going across it and then around the edges to just, you know, stick it in there. I hope it, it'll, it'll stay in there, but we'll see in time. But those are my my uh, chickens <laughs> they look beautiful black you guys I almost don't want to I don't want to paint them anything else I, I, I kind of want to leave them like that all right so I touched my rooster a lot and I can see little spots here and there where I uh, remove the paint so I'm going to touch that up let them dry completely and go to my next step all right so now what I want to do is I want to pass my white paint over it and hopefully some of the black especially like in the little crevices will remain um let's go ahead and try this and see how it works out <laughs> it's been a long time since i've done this and i don't know if i'm doing the right thing okay so i've got a brush here it should be completely dry mine's still a little bit moist but it's not wet um i've you know tried drying it as much as i could left it there for a couple of hours uh but it still feels a little bit you know damp so i'm going to go ahead and just use it as this we'll see what happens and then i've got some white paint so i'm just going to take some some of the paint and just kind of get it on the brush but we don't want to get too much paint then we can use a napkin to remove a lot of the paint <laughs> after we've put it on there that's why I said don't put too much paint because um, we're in a, just removing some of it so I'm just going to dry brush over uh, what I have here so it's just going to go like this and this will just kind of highlight the the textures and you can see that already happening here just pass it over like that. I think this looks absolutely beautiful, you guys. And I kind of don't want to put any other colors because I think this looks fabulous. So we're just going to go ahead and 
continue doing this and then we'll take give it a little look and see how how we like this try not to get into the little crevices don't push your brush in just brush lightly over the top just bring out those little details but you can see that look at that and let me let me turn this around carefully look at the back how oh, it's all black it's beautiful with a light hitting it you do see the details but then once we pass the brush then go ahead and add a little bit more paint onto it and cleaning off and then just brush it over like that see that if you want more white of course do your little first coat first and then do another uh, dry brushing <laughs> of your white paint and again don't push into the little crevices so you get that black to come through okay so this is what it looks like once we add the white I mean you can see a lot more detail now with the black I was really loving it I think it looks really elegant uh, and it also hides a lot of the little cracks things like that that I repaired uh, and I think you know uh, once I brush my rooster this way, it might highlight some of those cracks. So you want to be careful when you're passing over some of the, uh, you know, the cracked areas, not to not to go too evenly over them. Just kind of carefully brush and kind of skip over those areas. Uh, we'll see once we get to that. But as you can see, this works really nicely. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to highlight some areas a little bit more. So I'm going to add more white to this. A little crown here, a little gobble gobble thing on the bottom here a little beak I think this looks absolutely beautiful very very farmhouse uh, looking hen here little chicken here and then her little baby chicks on the bottom okay so I'm gonna continue doing this I'm gonna add as much as I want uh, and then I'll decide if I actually want to add some color because I'm really loving it I really am look at the rooster how majestic he looks I can't say it enough looks beautiful in black but this just brings out so much of the details. All right, so there's my chicken. Let me turn her around. There we go. I'm tempted to add actually more white to her, but I'm really liking this. I was gonna add color, but after seeing this, I really feel like I don't wanna add any color to it. I feel like I love them just like that. Um, there are a couple of spots where I feel like maybe I put too much white, like right here, maybe right here. I could go over it with some black, retouch that, but at the same time, I feel like it makes it look like it was completely white at some point, and then the paint just wore off, and so I decided to do the breast here of the little chicks here, more of the, the hen's face, add a little more white to it. I added a little bit more over here as well, as you can see, uh, it's it's more white than this side over here. Um, I, I really like it. I am now going to attempt doing that on the rooster and crossing my fingers, praying <laughs> that the little cracks don't show up because I tried my best to smooth them out, but I, I know that there's some that are still very visible. All right, there we go. Let's go with the rooster now. Okay, so again, picking up my paint, removing as much as I can. I'm actually going to work here on the bottom because I want to see how all that, you know, pops out. See, I can see a crack right there. It says, I can see the line. But I don't see it, the one that goes across here. So I think I did a pretty good job of that. Okay, let's do this. The one at the bottom is not that important, so I'm okay with that one little line right there. I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring it up here. See right here, you see a little line. Oh well, it's not that visible on the camera. Okay, so let's go around and continue. And then we'll do the, the tail because there was a huge crack on those feathers and we'll see how all that looks. Just trying to see if all my sculpting on these leaves came out okay and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking yeah look at the little even on the little apple right here the little leaves right there a little more white where the apples are of course I'll come back and and add more white in some areas but look at this guys there was a crack 
back here too. I can see a little bit of a line right there, but I don't know if that's a line from the crack or if that's just, oh no, the crack is running like that. And then it goes like this across the claw here and then around the little apple here. So actually that looks pretty good. And then I filled in right here. That looks really good. Let's see. You can't tell you guys. Okay. I'm going to continue doing my rooster and I'll be back once it's done. Let's do the little tail here real quick here so you can see. There was a crack that went across here and then some cracks here and there. I don't even remember where they are anymore. Those, oh, those are hidden away pretty good. I think I did a pretty good job of, um, what, what is it, leveling out the, the clay on there. Look at that, you guys. I don't see any cracks. I don't see them. The paint is not picking them up. Awesome. And I did a pretty good job of sculpting the feathers here where I added clay on top so that I could smooth out the cracks. You can see all the little details really well. That looks good. There is a crack right going through here and it goes up like that somewhere. I can see some of it right there, but because of the little scratches that I did here and there to mimic the ones that were already on the feather up here, the ones that I did down here, it kind of hides it, but I can see it and it goes across like that through the back. So let's see how that looks. It goes right there, I can see it, but it's not visible if it's far away and if you don't know that it's there you don't see it okay i'm gonna do this side and do a little more highlighting like i did the hand i love it and i'll be back with the finished product all right so before you are finished you want to make sure you seal the paint work that you just did and i'm actually using mod podge this is a gloss i would have preferred a matte finish because i really like the matte finish that the paint gives the uh chicken and the rooster uh, or the hen and the rooster uh because uh, it gives it more of an aged look but all i had was this mod podge and it has a gloss luster to it so i'm going to go ahead and use it i've already put it on the chicken it's starting to dry it doesn't have that big of a glo gloss to it so i'm okay with that uh, but you want to make sure it does the all the paint everything on it is dry very well because once you add this wet um mod podge you could move the paint around and then smear everything and make a mess of it so you want to make sure it is completely dry. The other reason that I decided that I will use the Mod Podge and not run off and go buy a clear sealant uh, is that uh, because I have some areas here where I added the ceramic clay, my Mod Podge will also serve as a glue to seal all of that and hopefully keep all of this intact. And then it won't, uh, you know, the little plaster or the, you know, the clay bits that are on top of the plaster of the um, rooster won't then peel off or flake off we'll see we'll see in time if that actually helped uh but i'm confident because it's not going to be anywhere where it's going to get moved around a whole bunch it's just going to be a decoration but you know dusting and such so we'll see how the mod podge looks so i'm just going to recommend that if you do do that you, you do uh, fix your item with some clay and use some mod podge on top to seal it go ahead and spray it all with a clear sealant just to make sure everything is nice and uh intact all right all right, everyone, there is my finished product. I went from a restoring to refinishing. <laughs> so I did want to do the colors uh, as much as I could close to what it was originally. But having done this finish with the black and then the white, I decided that I didn't want to put any color on them. I love the way they look. I'm sure if I took the time and painted them, they would look absolutely really beautiful. But I am so in love with this. I was in love with the black, just as it was. If it had a really glossy finish, it would have been awesome. Uh, these uh, set of uh, chickens that my parents gave me uh, almost ended up outside in my garden. I thought, well, I'm going to spray them with a sealant to put them outside in the garden. I think they would be really beautiful out there. Uh, to me, just saying, you know what, I think this could be a good project to try and restore uh, the rooster, at least, because the chicken, there was nothing wrong with her, or the hen, there was nothing wrong with her. But um, after, you know, doing the restoration, which I found very satisfying because I felt it works really well. Uh, if you have any uh, 
like doubts about putting the clay inside because you know the inside is hollow and if you're doing something like this I would suggest maybe stuffing some uh, plastic bags or some tissue paper in there like stuffing it really nice and tight in there maybe some styrofoam to seal the bottom to just keep that clay in place so it won't drop out if someday it, that could happen so actually now these are going to be going into my kitchen you guys I love them because that's where they were originally and they're gonna do great maybe sometime in the future i decide to what do you know let's go ahead and add some color to them but i'm gonna enjoy them like this so um i'm gonna give myself a big old thumbs up please give me a big old thumbs up as well so that uh also leave a nice comment down below and let me know what do you think should i have added color to them and restored them to their original sort of a look but just maybe just in the brighter tones or what do you think? Just let me know what, what your opinions are about this. Um, I don't mind them. It's, it's opinions. Everybody has different tastes. So tell me what you would do. Uh, I'm going to keep them like this. I love them. Uh, I'll see what my husband, what he thinks. Of course, you know, in, in the end, <laughs> I'm going to be the one that decides because after all, I am the one doing all the work. So uh, I'm going to leave them like this and think about it. And maybe, I don't know, maybe sometime in the future, we'll grab these again and do a refinishing on them. All right, everyone, if you haven't already subscribed and enjoyed the uh, content of my videos. Now, normally I post a craft video on uh, the beginning of the week, usually on a Monday. The latest is a Tuesday. Uh, and then I do a recipe or some other sort of video uh, at this time of the uh, week at the end, which is Thursday or Friday. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've had some things in my life that I've had to switch things around. Things have fallen off my schedule and I'm trying to get back on it. Uh, I am going to be off my schedule for the remainder of July. I have to be in San Antonio again this following week with my parents. Uh, I'm taking my father for a procedure. So I will be uh, away out of town. So I don't know if I'll be able to do a video um, uh, on the Monday or just basically just relax <laughs> for the long drive back and forth and uh, I don't know how long we'll be there so um, be, please be patient with me uh, like I said if you like the content of my videos I'm gonna ask you to please subscribe to my videos please check out my channel I have a ton of other videos you can watch and you know kind of catch up if you haven't seen my channel already before and for those of you who did you know join me uh the, maybe at the beginning of the year sometime a couple of months ago or a month ago you know this would be a good time to go back and look at some of my older videos and just let me know what you think also if you see anything uh in my videos that you feel like oh uh, trisha you know could you recreate that video maybe refresh it up do us another version of that. Let me know uh, because I, I do uh, enjoy your suggestions. Um, I also want to start doing some fall uh, decor. I want to start doing that uh, possibly August, September at the latest because by October, I think I start doing Christmas. So, <laughs> oops, sorry about that. I kicked the stand on my camera. So thank you all very much. Uh, make sure that you also, after subscribing, you hit that little notification bell that notifies you of when I upload videos, which I said is twice a week. I hope that you all have a super awesome weekend and you're the following week as well. I love you all very much. Thank you all for your support. And as always, enjoy.